again, you're hurting a film center seven-year-old just curse these on TV. All this month, I've had a great time exploring Boonshoff Museum of Discovery. And our final back-to-school science experiment continues on today with a look at science on a sphere. We're in a really cool room now here in the Boonshoff Museum of Discovery. This is where Noah's Science on a Sphere exists. And yes, that is the world, the globe, right in front of me. It's lit up every day, and you can come check it out at Boonshoff. What's great about this feature, especially as a meteorologist like me, I can look at what's happening with land temperature across not only the United States, but the world. One of the data sets is sea surface temperatures. Why do we care about what's happening in the ocean? Well, it impacts our weather. La Nina and El Nino, you've probably heard us talk about that, and those have to do with the temperatures of the Pacific Ocean. The equatorial Pacific, in particular, if it's warmer than normal or cooler than normal, that impacts what happens to our weather here, especially in the wintertime, we pay close attention to if we're in a La Nina or an El Nino phase. What's also neat is you have a kiosk that lets you click through all these different data sets, and one of my favorite is to see What's going on with thunderstorms across not only the United States, but across the world? Yeah, you could look at lightning detection to see the number of lightning strikes that has happened across the globe. So country by country, you could check out some of that real-time data. This is all science on a sphere, and it's all here at Boonshoft. So something that you could come and explore, not just for meteorologists, but for anybody. You can learn all about our world. And I could have spent hours at that kiosk. They have over 500 data sets that you can choose from and 45 data sets that are real time. So it is it's really just a special feature there uh, for, as I mentioned, not just meteorologists like me, but anybody. You can see even the tracks of where turtles are in the ocean across the world. Really, really amazing stuff. Now, in terms of what's uh, amazing for us, Gabrielle and I have been talking about this this week, whether or not uh, you know we're ready for fall or we're just enjoying these last summer days, well, whether you're ready or not, we have 28 days until fall officially begins. Our normal high temperature should be in the mid-80s. By September 1st, it is 83 degrees. By October 1st, the average high is 73. And then by November 1st, the average high is below 60. So and this is the time of year where you get that really quick transition to cooler weather. You'll notice the days getting shorter as well. Looking live outside, this morning temperatures are right in the 50s and low 60s. So another very comfortable start. And if you don't want fall to begin quite yet, you will like this weekend. This could be our uh, one of our last 90 degree days of the year here as we see a high of 90 forecasted on Sunday. Visibility for our commuters today looks good. We've had a couple struggles over the past few mornings with areas of fog. I don't expect it to be a big problem today. And Chip City is one of the schools that head back this morning. We'll be around 60 as you're standing at the bus stop, and then 85 by the end of the day. Some other cities after school, Springfield 85 as well. We'll be around 86 in Centerville and 84 degrees in Tip City. The UV index again is an 8, so even though we're getting closer to fall, we are still getting those strong uh, incoming solar rays this time of year, especially on sunny days like what we'll see later this afternoon. The weed pollen is starting to climb, which is indicative of fall. Typically at the end of summer and the beginning of fall is when our weed pollen spikes here in the Miami Valley. Tonight we're going to dip to 65. It'll start to get muggier tonight and then tomorrow we do have our next cold front coming through that will trigger a couple showers. Now good news is I expect those showers to fade out before we head into our football games for Friday night so you should see a very quick window where we'll have a few rain showers Friday. For today we just see a few clouds. Those clouds won't start increasing much until later tonight and tomorrow morning we could have a couple passing showers with one more chance in the afternoon for a stray shower or two. Here's 8 o'clock on Futurecast, though, and you can see we're dry by then. So that's good news for Touchdown 7 this week. I think most of those games will be pretty pleasant. We heat up into the weekend with a 90-degree day on Sunday. I think we're dry during the day, but Sunday night and then off and on on Monday and Tuesday, we'll see some showers and storms. Let's check in with Sergeant Mark now. He has a look at our morning commute. Good morning, Sarge. Hey, good morning to you, Kirstie. Well, a couple of minutes ago, I heard uh, Preble County send a uh, fire crew. Uh, now, we believe law enforcement said that way as well. We have a crash reported on U.S. Route 127 at Alexander Road. Now, I looked it up. Uh, that wasn't what I was familiar with, but it's about halfway between Interstate 70 
and the city of Eaton in Pueblo County. It does sound like a vehicle may be on fire as a result of that crash. That's why they sent the fire crews there. Again, that's 127 at Alexander Road. So we're following up on that. Out on other parts of the freeway, though, I really haven't noticed any real problems. There's 75 at Wagner Ford Road, and we're still looking at relatively light volume on this part of the freeway. I'm Sergeant Mark Bowen, WHIO Team Traffic. The time is 520. The temperature we're up to 65 degrees. Dayton has made a top 10 list. Why is being called one of the safest cities? And some people in Springfield found flyers in their neighborhoods that they say were disturbing. What the message said and how they're responding to it. And are you looking to buy a new house that comes with homeowners association? We'll take a look at the good and the bad. 